How's it going everyone, it is Panjado here, and in today's video we're going to be covering the Fortnite Chapter 3 Ultimate FPS Increase Guide. Over the last few years of Fortnite being out, there have been a ton of optimizations, tweaks, and settings which have come and gone, and in this video we're going to be covering all of the best optimizations which have stuck around, brand new optimizations, and everything you need to know about optimizing your system, tweaking your settings, to ensure that you're getting the best FPS possible in the latest update to Fortnite, also helping you reduce your input latency, help fix any FPS stutter or lag issues, and dial in competitive graphics settings for a sharp, great looking game for a competitive advantage, ensuring that you have the best gameplay experience possible by the end of this video. If you do enjoy this video and are happy with your results, please do consider pressing the like button and leaving a comment down below to help out with the YouTube algorithm as that helps out a ton. And with all that said and done, let's get straight on into the video. To kick things off, before we jump into any of the in-game specific optimizations, it is highly recommended to ensure that you are up to date with your Windows installation. Whether you're choosing to stay on Windows 10 or on Windows 11, please do ensure that it is up to date. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, select the Windows button, type in update, select check for updates, navigate over to the check for updates button within the side of this page and allow Windows to scan for any updates. Any and all available Windows updates will then be listed here. You will also see if there is a new significant update to your operating system, you'll be able to download and install this and it is recommended to do so. Next up are some basic Windows optimizations. We can first of all start by navigating down to our task bar, right clicking and opening task manager. Windows 11 users, press Control alt delete on your keyboard and open up task manager through that screen. Inside of task manager, navigate over to the startup tab at the top. Every single program within inside of this list that's been set to enabled is going to automatically start up and open the moment you log in on your PC when you restart. You want this list to be as minimal as possible. You'll still be able to use all of these programs once you disable them. To disable an app, navigate over to an app which is currently enabled, highlight the app, go to the bottom right, select disable. To piggyback off of that step, we can close out of all of the background processes that are currently running from that very step. Navigate to the bottom right hand side to your icon tray. Once inside of here, start right clicking on programs you don't need. If you're planning on playing Fortnite through the Epic Games launcher, well you don't need Steam open in the background, so exit out of this and exit out of all other apps in which you no longer need open. Continuing on with Windows optimizations, take yourself to the bottom left hand side, type in game space mode, select game mode settings. For Fortnite, regardless of how good, bad, new or old your system is, game mode is recommended to have switched to the on position. With that set, exit out, go to the bottom left hand side once again, this time typing in GPU space settings, selecting the graphics settings panel, and if you do have the option available to you for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, enable this option. Another quick, basic and incredibly important step is to just check which Windows power plan you are running on. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in power space plan, select edit power plan, navigate to the navigation bar at the top, select power options. Go to the drop down menu underneath show additional plans and you'll have all of the power options available to you. If you are currently running on the balanced power plan, consider checking out the high performance power plan or if you want to go one step further, you can also enable the ultimate performance power plan. This is very simple and easy to do. Navigate to the bottom left hand side, select Select your Windows button, type in CMD, right click on command prompt and run this as an administrator. Once you've opened this up, navigate inside of the description down below to the power plan to copy and paste text. You'll be able to find this command. Highlight all the way from the right hand side to the left, right click, copy. Go back inside of CMD, use Control and V on your keyboard to paste, then press enter. Once that's done, exit out of CMD, go back over to the power options, hit the refresh button, go right to the bottom, you should then be able to see the ultimate performance power plan. I wouldn't recommend using the ultimate performance power plan if you are running on a laptop, specifically if it's running on battery power most of the time. Anything other than that, definitely try this power plan out, as you can simply and easily turn it back just by selecting another power plan. So select the power plan you're going to be going with and exit out. Now moving on to an incredibly important optimization for any of you watching that use a Chromium based browser, whether that be Microsoft Edge, Firefox, or Google Chrome. Open up your browser, go to the top right hand side to the three lines or three dots, go down to your settings menu. On the left hand side, go to advanced. Inside of here, ensure that the option for continue running background apps when Chrome is closed has been disabled. For GPU optimizations, the most important things are to ensure that you are running on the latest GPU drivers for Fortnite Chapter 3. Especially for those of you running on AMD Radeon graphics cards, the latest Radeon graphics card driver as of the time of recording this video has phenomenal FPS improvements across the board in practically every single game. To find out which GPU you have 
install to your system, go down to your task bar, right click, open up task manager. Go to your performance tab, on the left hand side scroll all the way down, find your GPU, and the top right hand side you'll then be able to see the make and model of the GPU you are using. With that information, click on the GPU driver link in the description down below which matches your make. For NVIDIA GeForce users you'll be brought to this web page. Navigate to the manual driver search, input the information, your operating system, select start search, then download the latest driver. For those of you running on an AMD Radeon GPU it's a very similar process, you'll be brought to this web page, graphics, the make and model in which you're using, then download the latest driver. For another performance optimization for those of you running on an AMD Ryzen based CPU, especially either a 3000 or 5000 series CPU, you want to ensure that you're running on the latest AMD Ryzen chipset drivers. This is incredibly important not just for security fixes but also performance. Simply navigate down to the AMD Ryzen chipset driver download link in the description down below, navigate down to the drop down menu, select chipsets, select AMD Socket AM4, then select the model of motherboard in which you have. I personally have a B550 motherboard, but do research which your motherboard is. Select your motherboard, then select Submit. Select the operating system, then the latest chipset driver available at the top. Take yourself to the desktop, right click, and either open up inside of the NVIDIA control panel or AMD Radeon panel. For NVIDIA users, start by going to Adjust Image Settings with Preview in the top left hand side. Ensure that the middle option for Advanced 3D Image Settings has been selected, then select Apply. Navigate over to Manage 3D Settings on the left hand side. For the big settings we need to set up, go down to Low Latency Mode. If you are running on an NVIDIA GPU which is not supported by NVIDIA Reflex with inside of the game, set this to On. Otherwise you can set this however you wish to do so, as NVIDIA Reflex will override this setting anyway. Power Management Mode should be set to Prefer Maximum Performance. Preferred Refresh Rate should be set to Highest Available. For shader cache size, this is going to depend on how much free space you have available on your C drive. Depending on how much space you have available in here will really depend on how much you're going to be setting your shader cache size to. For me, I have 108 gigabytes free on my C drive. So for me, I'd probably be setting this to 10 gigabytes at a maximum. If you have about 200 gigabytes free or more, I'd maybe set this to 100, or if you're not entirely sure what to go with, just go with driver default. Anisotropic sample optimizations on. Texture filtering quality should be set to high performance. Trilinear optimizations on. And that's it for the NVIDIA settings in which you need to set up. Now for those of you that are serious about getting the most performance possible out of your system, please do consider applying a GPU overclock. Regardless of if you've got a brand new 3090, or you're sitting on a GTX 670, GPU overclocking is incredibly important and worthwhile in nearly every single scenario. In GPU bound scenarios, you could be seeing anywhere from a 10 to 15% performance increase from applying a few quick sliders with inside of MSI Afterburner. Once the game has been installed, navigate down to the bottom right hand side once again to the three dots, then head over to Options. Under Options, ensure that the high resolution textures have actually been unchecked as this will defaultly be installed every single time you install Fortnite. Uninstalling this will free up around about 21 gigabytes of space from the Fortnite installation, which is incredibly useful as you may now be able to install Fortnite onto an SSD, which may not have had enough free space available to justify having Fortnite on. Once that's been unselected, select Apply. The game will then need to quickly update to remove those excess files. For one last important optimization before we boot into the game, take yourself to the bottom left hand side to your file explorer. Laura. Inside of the File Explorer, navigate over to this PC, take yourself to the top right hand side to search this PC and we're going to be searching for Fortnite Launcher.exe. Once that's done, select Enter. This may take a little while to find, but once you find the Fortnite Launcher EXE comes up, right click on this, navigate down to Open File Location. Inside of here we need to apply a quick optimization to the four EXEs found with inside of here. Start off with Win64 Shipping.exe. Right click, Properties, Compatibility. If you're using DirectX 11 or the Performance Mode, check this option. If you're using in DirectX 12, leave this option off. My recommendations is to use the performance mode or DirectX 11, so enable this. Select change our DPI, override, OK, apply, and OK. You then need to repeat that optimization and the settings in which you set for the three other EXEs with inside of it. Once you've booted into the main menu of the game, take yourself to the top left hand side to the three bars, navigate down to the bottom left hand side to the settings cog, then select the settings menu. Inside of here, starting off, windowed mode is going to be set to full screen for every single person watching. This will be giving you the lowest level of input latency and the best FPS possible. Resolution is something we're going to be coming back to towards the end of this video, but for now I'd recommend setting this to either your native resolution or the highest resolution available. Frame rate limit, you can cap your FPS if you're on a PC which is prone to overheating or getting quite hot on 
thermal throttling. This can be quite especially important for those of you running on laptops, but if you are hunting for the best FPS possible and the lowest level of input latency, definitely leave this unlimited. Brightness, user interface, colorblind and colorblind strength are all personal preference and have no effect on FPS, so set those how you wish to do so. This now brings us down to the quality presets. 3D resolution, for now we're going to be leaving it 100%, but we will be coming back to this towards the end of the video. View distance, if you are on an incredibly low end system, definitely set this to near, but for those of you running on medium end to high end systems, you could actually see more stable frame rates setting this to either medium or far. The reason for this is that it's going to be rendering more around you so you won't run into harsh lag spikes when you're entering new areas where a lot of new data will need to be loaded in quickly very often. Shadow quality should either be set to off, but if you do want to keep shadows on if you want a slightly nicer looking game, set this to medium. In my personal opinion, anti-aliasing is not needed in this game. Turning anti-aliasing off will give you a much sharper and crisper looking image. It might not be as pleasing to the eye, but this will provide you with a competitive advantage and sharpen up your graphics. Textures, the lower the setting, the better the results are going to be, regardless of how good or bad your system is. Either set this to low, but for some of you running on higher end systems and want a slight increased to graphics fidelity, set this to medium. Effects quality and post-processing, in my opinion, should be set to low for both of them, as these are just visual clutter and will remove from the experience of the game. You want to have a nice, clear, clean image at all times, alongside a decent FPS improvement and reducing latency. V-Sync should be switched off for practically every single person, unless you are using a funky G-Sync setup. Motion blur should be turned off. I'd recommend turning show FPS on. Allow multi-threaded rendering is going to be switched on. GPU crash debugging off, latency markers off, and Nvidia reflex low latency should be set to on plus boost. Latency flash is going to be switched off as this is for latency analyzing on Nvidia reflex monitors. Those are the main settings in which every single person watching should set if you're on a relatively decent end PC. But if you are serious about getting the best FPS possible, the lowest level of input latency, and the clearest, cleanest competitive graphics, I would actually recommend navigating over to your rendering mode and switching this to the performance mode. This is going to remove a ton of visual clutter with side of the game and give you a very bare bones image, but with the correct resolution set and some other techniques in which we're going to be applying, this will give us insane results in terms of FPS, from old outdated low end systems all the way up to the latest and greatest RTX 30 series graphics cards. If you want the best experience possible, the performance beta cannot be beaten. For most of you watching, unless you are wanting to use ray tracing for some reason, I would completely ignore DirectX 12. It's somewhat decent for FPS, but you will run into micro stuttering issues in most instances, and DirectX 11 and DirectX 11 performance mode are just a lot more stable. So for the best settings possible, simply copy the settings which have been shown on screen and apply those settings. You may be prompted that you will need to restart your game for those settings to take effect. We're going to click confirm to this. If you did delete your config files earlier on in the video, before booting into a game to test your FPS, remember to go back inside of your main settings page, set your mouse sensitivity, your building options, and all of your keybinds back. It is also recommended to go into your main options menu, never get down to NVIDIA highlights and have these switched off. And if you don't use replays or large team replays, turn these off as well, as this can help reduce micro stutters. With that done, select apply and continue on. We can then jump into the in-game config files to apply a few last FPS optimizations to further our performance in game. For this, take yourself to the bottom left hand side once again, click on the Windows button, type percent app data percent enter. Go back up to the navigation bar at the top, select app data, local, navigate all the way back down to the F section and find Fortnite game, go inside of saved, config, windows client, and you'll then be able to find game user settings. Double click on this INI file as we're going to be changing a few settings with inside of here. For the first setting we're going to be changing, navigate down to B show grass and change this to false. We can then proceed to scroll down until we find B disable mouse acceleration. This will be set to false by default. We're going to be setting this to true shading quality. We're going to be setting this to either one or zero. The rest of your settings with inside of here may be slightly different depending on how high or low you set them with inside of the game. With that then set up, take yourself to the top left hand side, select file, save, and exit out. For one of my last and final optimizations for Fortnite, and something I practically recommend in every single one of my videos because it's just that useful, is to check out the ISLC or Intelligent Standby List Cleaner tool. This is a simple two-in-one optimization program which can help lower your input latency and clear out background processes in the background. Find the link in the description down below. Once you've found it, navigate down to official download link here, select this option, open up the program, select the three dots, go to desktop, okay, and extract. You'll then be met with a folder on your desktop, double click on this, 
go inside of the intelligence stand by this cleaner.exe. To set the program up, set the first box to 1024. The second box needs to be set to half of your overall system memory in which you can find in the top left hand side. In this instance I have 32,000 megabytes so roughly half of that is going to be about 16,000. Go to the right hand side to ISLC polling rate. For high end and medium end systems set this to 500. For medium end to low end systems go with 1000. Set your wanted time resolution to 0.50 then use your delete key to remove the extra values. Turn on enable custom time resolution selecting start. You can then see that that has now been cleared out. I've removed 20 gigabytes of my standby list in the background freeing up excess performance helping my PC remain smoother and I would personally recommend turning on this program hitting start minimizing out of it then booting into your favorite game or for the sake of this video Fortnite. Last but not least for those of you that want a few more features available and you don't want to use the performance rendering API with inside of the game if you do own an Nvidia RTX based GPU it may actually be recommended to make use of the DLSS options with inside of the game as this is a fantastic way of achieving more FPS especially for those of you playing at higher resolutions. If you are planning on using DLSS here are a few recommended settings depending on which resolution in which you play at which you should definitely try out as you'll be seeing the best results from using this. It's then recommended to boot into a solo match or the creator mode. I personally do prefer booting into the new creator mode as this is a relatively dense village giving you a good indication of FPS in a relatively worst case scenario on your machine. This is in no way an indication of the best FPS you'll be receiving but there's so many buildings and assets in this area. Inside of here take notice of how your graphics look, how the game looks, notice your shadows and if the game is too blurry or not. Take a look at your current FPS and if you're not quite happy with it we can go back inside of the in-game settings and we can start off by going over to the resolution and 3D resolution modes. For the quickest and easiest setting for most of you watching if you want more FPS go over to the 3D resolution tab and use some of the settings showcased on the right hand side of the screen now. Take it down to 89%, apply this, go back with inside of the game, you'll notice that your graphics have become slightly more blurry. Continue to repeat this until you are at the lowest resolution in which you are happy with both visually and how it performs. In my personal opinion if you are looking for a further FPS increase I would set your 3D resolution back up to 100% and for those of you running on an Nvidia based graphics card this doesn't have to be an RTX based GPU or even a new GPU I would definitely consider using the brand new Nvidia image scaling or NIS technology and there's a video on screen now which I recently placed on the channel which is doing absolutely fantastically where you can set a lower internal resolution for the game which will then be upscaled to your monitor's resolution with some image sharpening and scaling techniques applied to it to have the game look absolutely fantastic with much higher FPS than running on a normal native resolution. It's a very quick and easy video to follow and it's highly recommended. Making sure that your BIOS has been set up correctly, if the BIOS settings have not been set up you could be missing out on up to 30% of your performance. Consider researching into as many of these settings as possible for your system, starting off with a CPU all-core overclock, as an all-core overclock will give you the best multi-core performance which is preferred from most games, especially CPU heavy ones such as Battle Royale titles. For those of you running on Ryzen CPUs, consider disabling both the CPPC and CPPC preferred cores as this can have improvements to lowering latency. For both Intel and Ryzen systems, make sure that your memory has been set to use the XMP or DOCP memory profiles. These are very quick and easy to set up, and if they've not been set up by you manually or whoever built your PC, you're going to be running into the stock settings for your CPU regardless of how good your RAM kit is. Alongside that, for Ryzen users, make sure that your F clock or Infinity fabric has been set to half of the memory speed from your XMP profile to ensure that your F clock and memory speed are running at a one-to-one -one ratio, which provides the best results for Ryzen CPUs. If you want a relatively new GPU and your CPU also supports this, look into enabling the rebar or resizable bar option for your GPU as you will also see performance improvements from doing this. After this, if you are still serious about getting the most performance possible and are not sure what to do yet, look into potentially picking up a kit of Samsung BDI memory chips. Google will definitely be your friend here, but these memory chips are the best DDR4 memory available. They have the best overclocking potential and will also help you achieve the lowest latency timings on the RAM compared to other kits of RAM which are available. If you're interested in seeing other optimization videos to get the most out of your games or are looking to optimize other games in which you may play, check out the videos on screen now.